Hey, what's going on guys? Today I'm going to be showing you how to set up LaunchBox, which is a really awesome front end that allows you to manage and launch all your ROMs in emulation, Steam, DOS, and Windows games. And not only does it do that, but it gets metadata and game descriptions for your games, as well as screenshots. So what you got to do to start the process off is head over to their website, links are in the description, type in your email, and they'll send you a link. And once you get that download link, you're going to get the installer. Just click through this installer. I'm sure you've been through a bunch of them, and I'll see you right after you get done installing it. And once you're done with the install, you'll be greeted with this little screen right here telling you all the latest fixes to the version of LaunchBox that you uh, opened up. Go ahead and click Don't Show This Again if you'd like, and then hit Close. And it'll ask you if you'd like to import any games or anything like that. So right now, we're going to exit out of this and we're going to minimize it out of LaunchBox, and we're going to go ahead and make a directory in our LaunchBox folder that contains our emulators, so everything is in one spot once we're done. So the way we do this, and the easiest way we do this, is we go to the LaunchBox install location, and what we can do is go to the desktop icon, right-click it, go to open file location, and this will open up our LaunchBox directory, the area where LaunchBox is installed. Once we're in here, we're going to add a new folder called Emulators, and we're going to move our emulators into this folder. This is not a necessary step, but it makes everything a lot easier, so I would suggest doing it. Alright, so click and drag your emulators into this folder. Right there, now we have it in there, and we can close that up, and we can go ahead and open LaunchBox again. Alright, so now we're going to import our ROMs and set up our emulators. So the first way we can import our ROMs is by highlighting them and just clicking and dragging them here. And it'll give us this little pop-up. Pop and the second way is by hitting Tools, and then going to Import, and then going to ROM Files. And that's what we're going to do. This process for emulation and ROM setup is the same for every console. So I'm doing an NES, but don't worry, you can do whichever console you're currently doing. So we're going to hit next on this page, and here we're prompted to either add a couple of files, or we can add an entire folder. I'm going to add an entire folder, which is going to be my desktop, because that's where my ROMs are for right now. And I'm going to hit next. And now it's asking what console we're importing the ROMs for. So you can hit this drop-down list right here and choose the console that you're emulating. For me, it's Nintendo Entertainment System, so I'm going to go ahead and click that. And then hit next. Right here, it's asking us to pick an emulator, but we don't have an emulator set up right now, so we're going to have to go ahead and hit Add, and it actually gets right. I will be using Nestopia. There's a pre-populated list down here. Click this drop-down and find your emulator and click it. If you can't see it, don't worry. Just type in the name right there in the bar where it says Nestopia on my screen. And then for Emulation Path, we're going to have to click on Browse, and we're going to find the EXE that launches our emulator. And for me, this is in my LaunchBox directory under Emulators, and here's the SNES emulator. And we're going to click the EXE to that would launch the emulator. If you do not see your emulator showing up, go ahead and click on this little drop-down menu right here, go to All Files, and then it should show up. So double-click that, and over on Associated Platforms, make sure that Nintendo Entertainment System is filled in right there, and also make sure that it's checked off as the default emulator. For RetroArch users, this should have a command line in here, and it should look something like this. So what's important for you guys to do is if your games don't launch after you've set this up, it's because it's not asking RetroArch to use the right core. So in your RetroArch directory, in your core folder, figure out which core you're using to emulate the console and copy the name of the DLL right here where it says your core name here, and make sure you still have the DLL after it. All right, excellent. But everyone else, just ignore that. So now we're done right there, and we can press OK. Now we can hit Next, and we have three options. From the bottom to the top, the options are Use Files in Current Location. So in this case, it would leave these files on my desktop. The only problem with using this option is if you ever move your games, RetroArch won't be able to find it, and you'll have to reset the pathways. The next option is Move Files into my LaunchBox game folder. And what this will do is it'll make a game folder in your LaunchBox directory, the same area we made that folder for our emulators, and it will move all your ROMs in there, and it'll keep everything in one spot. The last option is copy files into the game library, and what this will do is it'll do the same thing as move, but it'll just copy them instead. So you'll have the originals wherever they are, in my case on the desktop, 
and you'll have the new ones in the launchbox folder. So I'm going to go ahead and click move and now we're prompted for metadata and what metadata is is it shows game descriptions and whatever else on the side of the screen once you have your game highlight it and import it. I suggest going with the launchbox database. You can do the wiki as well or you could do none. It's all up to you. On this next screen it asks us what kind of artwork we'd like and I'm going to take all the artwork. Once again you can check off or leave check whatever you want. So we're going to hit next. This next page is for Amu Movies and what this will do is it'll download videos for your game. I'm not sure if in the regular version of Launchbox there's a use for this. So hit next. And right here are special options. Please look over these yourselves. You do not have to check any of these. Um, I guarantee if you don't know what they do, you, you're not going to need to use them. And then we're going to go ahead and click next. And right here we can see a list of games that we're about to import. And it's important that they have all the correct names. So if your game doesn't have a correct name, change the title now. We're gonna, I'll show you what happens if you don't. So we're going to hit finish and we're going to import our games. As you can see our games are imported and they're all looking good. But the only problem is Contra isn't looking so hot itself. So if you ever have a game that doesn't load in correctly, what you're going to do is you're going to right click it, go to edit, on the title here, type in the title of the game, and then hit search for metadata. And then once you do that, you'll see a drop down list of a bunch of different games you can pick. Hit the one that's yours and use the one that says Launchbox Database next to it. And we can download the images by going down here and clicking Download Images. Once again, select which ones you want and press OK once you're done. And now Contra is looking good. Next two things I'm going to do is show you how to add your Steam library and your Windows game. So we're going to go to Tools, and we're going to go ahead and click on Import, and then we're going to go to Steam Games, and this is really simple. On the first screen, just press Next. It tells you how to find your URL uh, right here, so you're going to type in your username. For me, it's Super Dooby Doo. And you're just going to click next. And it's going to prompt you with all the same metadata box art questions as before. So I'm just going to skip through this. And as you can see, my Steam games are now here too under Windows. The next thing you might want to do is add a game that is not a Steam game, so it didn't import with your Steam library. And as you can see, I have The Sims 4 here. And what the way you do this is you go to the install directory, find the launch file, and then click and drag it over to LaunchBox. So the easiest way to do this is if you have a shortcut, go to Open File Location, and it'll take you to the folder that has the launch exe. We're going to click and drag this over to LaunchBox. It's important for Windows games that you click none of the above. And for the platform, we're going to go ahead and type in Windows. We're going to use this in its current location. You have to do this with the one, these ones or they won't work. And then once again, the same metadata questions as always. And at the end of the install, make sure the game's name is correct. And it will go ahead and import it into your library. You can also go to Tools, Import, and import Windows games. I've never had very much luck with this, doing it this way, so I'd really suggest you do it the way I just showed you. And there's The Sims 4. The last thing I'm going to show you is how to install an MS-DOS game. I'm only going to go over games that are already pre-installed into a folder. So this game is already pre-installed in a folder. So you're going to go ahead and hit Tools. You're going to go to Install DOS Games. You're going to type in the name of the game. You're going to go to Next. And for this one, yes, my game is installed in a folder. And if this one, if you haven't installed it yet and you need to install it, click that. Go ahead and it's going to ask you to find the launch file for the game. So you're going to go into your game folder. For me, it's on the desktop in Star Wars. And this is a pretty guessy thing. Sometimes you're going to have to go through a couple of these to make sure it works. I know for a fact it's dark. And I'm going to go to Next and Finish. And it will import the game. Once again, we're going to find the metadata for it. And now we can play DOS games. The one last thing that's important to know about DOSBox is if you ever need to edit your emulators, you can go to uh, Tools and then manage, manage Emulators. And you can either add another emulator from here or edit it. And if you're one of those RetroArch people and it's not working, make sure you have the right core in your d command line parameters. And that's pretty much it. I'd say just take a second and look through the program and just familiarize yourself with it. So you guys have a good one. Thank you so much for watching. And if it helped, be sure to like and subscribe. Peace out, Omega.